This is the 15th video in this series working with a Make Human Model and Blender. And in the last video, we finished up betweening our frames for the legs and refining the motion a little bit. And although it's still not perfect, it's a motion, so it's a start. In this video, I'm going to get the hands moving, and I'm going to try to do it quick because I'd like to do something else too. So first off, I'm going to just do a little bit of basic setup on the hands and drop them down a little bit. So I'll drop those into the body. Then I'll look from a top view to see which hand I have selected and that hand should be swinging forward. So I'll just grab that and give it a bit of a forward swing. Grab the other hand and give it a bit of a backward swing. Then I'll look at that from a front view, and I guess I could give a little bit of rotation to the shoulders too. So I'll rotate those in conjunction with the direction the legs are rotated. So I'll rotate that one back and this one forward a bit. And I think that's it. That's all I'm going to do for the upper body. And the reason I'm cutting corners and not refining these motions a lot is because that's not really something that that a uh, tutorial can step by step rotate this by that much and such. Um, I personally figure this is something for practicing and, and learning on, on your own. So, and aside from that, well, I'm not terribly great at it myself and I have a lot of, a lot of need for practice as well. So I'll start setting keyframes for that. I'll set a keyframe at frame 1, copy that pose, go to frame 21, paste the pose flipped, set a keyframe for that, and then go to 41, and paste the initial pose, and set a keyframe for that. And that should give us a little bit of motion in the hands and arms. It's certainly not perfect. Could stand a little bit of in-betweening, just like the likes did. And, well, it could stand a little bit of practice. As well, the overall animation could use some rotation to the body as well, because it stays awfully straight. But for the sake of saving time in the video and moving things on, I think that that's the thing to do is to leave refining a walk cycle. Um, I've shown the basics which is about all I can do. Now what we're going to do is come over into the action and NLA editors. Since this is a walk cycle I might as well name it walk and it's reasonable to give a number to, a, to that name because it's entirely likely that we, we may want to make another walk cycle and have different kinds of walks. Down here in the NLA editor, I'll select that cycle, come into strip, and convert action to NLA strip. And this will make the action into an NLA strip. By pressing the N key, I come up with the transform properties. And what I'm going to do here is set this action up for forward cycling. And one thing I need to do is to use forward cycling is I have to engage the hold option. My offset bone is going to be balance. And as I understand, this bone will offset the forward cycling so that Blender knows how far it's going forward and where to start the next NLA strip. The first field in the options is called repeat, and I'm going to set it to repeat five times. That will repeat the walk action five times. 
and there's one strip. And when I go and tell it to repeat five times, I then have one, two, three, four, five strips. Next thing we're going to want to do is add a modifier, but first we have to set up to do that. So we'll go into object mode, actually, in pose mode, I want to snap the cursor to the center of my armature, which incidentally is also the center of the bone which I'm going to have follow a path. So I'll set my cursor there. I need to come into the object buttons. <coughs> and one thing to know about our animation is if our model, when we press the 1 key, if the model is facing towards us, when we press the 3 key, it will be facing, um, well, left on our screen. And the direction of its travel is along the y-axis, but it isn't traveling in a positive direction. It's traveling in a minus direction. So we need to come down into the object dialog, into the object settings, into the animation settings and change our animation settings to minus y because that's the direction our animation is traveling in and that's very important. Um, what we're doing won't work at all if we don't do that. It'll actually it'll flip our model around when we add a curve. So that's what we're going to do now is add a curve. We're going to add a curve. We could use a visor curve and set up the settings or just use a path. I'm going to go with a path because it's easier. With the path added, I'll tab into edit mode and simply pull it out of the body so I can have a look at it. So I'm going to pull it a good ways out. Zoom in on it. On the pathway, it has arrows and those arrows are indicating the direction of travel. And also define the start of the pathway. The start of the pathway needs to be brought up to the start of the rigging. So it will snap that to the cursor. And that will bring the pathway into the bone I intend to use for the channel. As well, it's completely centered on my rigging. And I'm not sure which is more important, uh, the bone or the rigging. And I haven't experimented with that to be certain. The bone I have it following is completely the center of my rigging anyways. So on my model, that's the way that it works out and the way that this model is set up. I'm going to edit this pathway a little bit. And make a clear and definite curve out of it. While we're editing, it's good to observe the name of our pathway, and its name is Curve, which is the default name. Now we'll go into Object Mode. We have our Curve set up, or our Path set up. Now I'm going to add a modifier. I'm going to add, a, add it for the channel, which is a bone, Balance which is the bone which I centered the cursor on and then centered the pathway on. And then I want to set it to the object, Curve, because that's the name of the pathway, the default name. And if all's gone well, what we'll see from our model is a little twist, or, or not, depending on how straight the curve is. My curve is a little bit off of the y-axis, so when I engaged it, there was a little twist to my model. And if we key through the animation at this point, our model should follow that pathway. Um, this is as far as I've managed to figure out the pathway. And in my next video, hopefully I'll be coming back with some information on how to make that pathway more three-dimensional, so it isn't a completely straight line in one direction and a nice curved line in another. In other words, I'll be looking at how to get my model to walk up a hill. So that'll be in future videos and hopefully I'll get that figured out soon. And until then, happy modeling.